Hello, you're watching Health Day Now. I'm Mabel Jong. During the early days of the pandemic, healthcare personnel were hailed as heroes for their tireless work on the front lines. More than a year and a half later, those same workers say they're coming face to face with a steep rise in violence in their workplaces as they care for patients. Often, it's accepted as part of the job, but should it be? With me now is Grace Politis, a nurse who worked in the emergency department at Lowell Hospital in Massachusetts. Natalie Higgins, an emergency room nurse at Cox Health in Springfield, Missouri, and health and safety expert, Dr. Jane Lipscomb. She's a former professor at the University of Maryland School of Nursing and author of the book, Not Part of the Job, about workplace violence. Great to have you all here. Thank you. Thank you. Grace, let's start with you. Uh, you've been a nurse for six years. Last July, you reported to work and then something really unexpected and really scary happened when you were just manning the desk in the emergency department? Yes, um, my emergency room is broken up into kind of two floors. One is a uh, core emergency, and then the next floor up is the psychiatric emergency where a lot of patients that are going to be inpatient somewhere get held um, until we can find a place. Mm -hmm. um, I was just documenting at my computer, just catching up on some stuff and kind of out of nowhere, um, I, all of a sudden, I just remember thinking to myself, oh my gosh, you know, my head hurts really bad. Why does it hurt so bad? And kind of blacked out a little bit, came to, had some intermittent episodes of coming to, and um, later on found out that I was hit in the head twice with a fire extinguisher by a patient. How severe were your injuries? Pretty severe. I had a fractured skull. I had two head bleeds um, and a crush injury to one of my fingers. Had you had any indication at all uh to what led to that? I mean, what, what was the story with this patient? Not really a clue, um, you know, not giving too much away uh, about what his background is, but, um, you know, he was waiting on an inpatient bed. Um, I had a very small interaction with him. He kind of didn't want anything to do with talking to me. And, you know, when you are a nurse, you learn that you have to respect their boundaries and say, okay, you know, we don't have to talk, that's okay. Um, so I didn't really have much interaction with him. Um, however, it came out of nowhere. There were other patients on the unit that I was more concerned about possibly having, um, you know, an, uh, an, uh, an episode. And I didn't expect this patient to whatsoever. Um, I was very surprised that it was actually him. Um, and yeah. Now, before that, had you ever been assaulted physically or verbally? You know, I've had my, this is tough to say, but I've had my fair share of verbal abuse or, you know, minor, very minor physical abuse being working in the emergency room for four years. You see patients that are very mentally ill or um, very intoxicated or very influenced by drugs and they lash out, um, but I've never endured anything this severe. According to a study from the Occupational Health and Safety Administration, healthcare workers account for more than 50% of all victims of workplace violence. Dr. Lipscomb, lots of people think of healthcare settings as safe places. Why is it so common for it to be the opposite for people working there? Um, that's absolutely right. The public perception is that healthcare would be a safe place to work, and it's and it's not. Um, we're talking today about workplace violence, but there's many other um, hazards, both you know, physical, chemical, um, that nurses and other healthcare workers face. And I think as Grace you know, spoke about her incident, um, especially in the emergency room, you do have a lot of patients that either have me mental illness, they might have cognitive impairment from their, from their condition for which they're seeking help, drugs, alcohol, and I think on top of that, um, healthcare, especially these days, is a pretty acute, high-stress setting. So you bring someone in who's stressed or tense, you know, doesn't have um, a sense of their prognosis, and you put them in this environment, and they often act out. And it's the direct care workers, like the nurse that nurses, that are usually victims of this type of violence. Right. I mean, physicians are attacked too, but 
it seems that nurses oft, often take the brunt. Yes, I'd say nurses and certainly I'm in the um, psychiatric and long-term care setting often it's the, um, the nurses aides and those that have the most physical contact face time with, with the public. Now, Natalie, you've worked in your hospital ER for about four years. Have you personally seen the assault rate rise since you first started your job? Oh, absolutely. I mean, when I first started, you would see it every once in a while. It wasn't a, a huge ordeal, but now it's every day. Like a physical attacks, verbal attacks? Describe to me what that's like. The verbal attacks are every day when we're at triage because we have a visitor policy and people don't appreciate the visitor policy. And so they lash out at us, like it's our decision or our patients are frustrated with wait times. And the physical isn't as common, thankfully, but it's still happening too often. Now, during the time that you've worked at the hospital, have you seen your role stretch to cover other duties because of staffing shortages? Definitely. And before everything happened, you know, we always chipped in to do what we could do, but now it's you have to do X, Y, and Z because we just don't have the people to do it. So it's stretching us thinner and it's getting tougher and tougher to go to work every day. Dr. Lipscomb, are staffing shortages contributing to an unsafe environment in hospitals? Yeah, they definitely are. Um, again, I think we've known this for a while and um, I think maybe Natalie was referring to what's happened over the last you know, 18 plus months with COVID. And um, mm -hmm. our team actually recently published some research looking at a survey of nurses. And we found that those who took care of COVID patients reported twice as often being um, physically or verbally assaulted. So I think, you know, again, there's never been a more stressful time in healthcare. And with um, certainly all of the precautions, um, isolation, PPE, that just adds to the duties of the nurses and everyone in the healthcare setting. Um, you know, for a while when patients weren't able to have family or visitors, it all fell on the healthcare team to provide all of the needs in such a time of uncertainty. And I would also just add, given how politicized the whole issue of vaccines and masks, masking has become, I'd ask Grace and Natalie, but I would think that we're actually going to see an increase in violence rather than any kind of decrease. Yeah. Now, I do want to get to the, the unique stressors that have been created by the pandemic. Um, Grace, what about the physical nature of COVID infections, uh, people experiencing symptoms of dangerously low oxygen levels, which can lead to confusion and being more combative. Have you seen that in patients? Depending on the age of the patient and kind of depending on their already comorbidities, um, sometimes I have seen that. I've seen patients who have COVID that, um, you know, become kind of very confused and then trying to get out of bed or, you know, becoming you know, verbally abusive or just being aggravated. Um, I've also seen, you know, young, healthy adults become very, very angry and upset just for the pure fact that they have COVID. Um, and, you know, of course, the doctors and the nurses who tell them the results of what we're doing, we are kind of the ones that take the brunt of everything and all of the aggression. And, you know, sometimes you can't blame the people because they're thinking about their loved ones at home that they live with that they might have exposed. But um, yeah, they're, I think, COVID has a lot to do with it as well. Natalie, have you seen that? Um, your hospital took the extra step of arming health personnel with panic buttons. Have you had to use it? I haven't personally had to use it, but we wear it every day. And whenever it goes off, it alarms, you know, every staff member computer pops up who it is, what the location is, security comes running, they page it overhead. So everyone knows what's happening so we can all work together and keep our staff members safe. Dr. Lipscomb, what sort of federal legislation is in the works to protect health workers? There's a common sense approach to preventing violence and that is for hospitals to have, um, to, to do the hard work of developing a program 
that um, would look at their incidents of workplace violence and then look at what the government and professional organizations are recommending for how to control those kinds of risk factors. And Natalie mentioned the panic alarms. That's one you know, very important strategy to making sure that when a patient is acting out that help is sought and arrives in a timely way so someone isn't injured. So a program would include those kinds of um, hazard controls. Is that how you feel as well, Natalie? Or how has what you've experienced uh, changed the way you view your job? Just like Grace said, it was nothing like I had expected. I anticipated, you know, some some of it, especially with the psychiatric patients, because a lot of times they are under the influence. But seeing what I've seen, I would have never expected like to go to work and think, man, am I going to go home to my family tonight? So that's been a real eye opener for me the last four years. What about you, Grace? I mean, how are you feeling after that attack in July? Are you back to where you were before that happened? I went through a wave of emotions I never thought I would go through, just putting on my work clothes that I used to do without any issue. I, you know, I haven't been back to the emergency room. Every time I think about it, I get anxious, I get fearful. Um, you know, sometimes it's hard to describe because it's all inside. You can't necessarily see it on the outside, but there's just a wave of a wave of things that go through my mind when I think about going back to the emergency room. And that hurts because I always thought I was an emergency room through and through. Um, I love the emergency room. There's nothing like it. It's, you know, it's my flow. But unfortunately, I, I don't I don't think that I might be able to ever go back just because of what happened. Do those comments concern you, Dr. Lipscomb? Oh, very much so. I mean, actually, personally, Natalie and Grace, thank you so much for the work you do and for sharing it with Mabel and, and the network. Um, it's tragic. I mean, look at how much has gone into your training. Look how young you are. Look how much you have to offer. And wow, one incident over the course of minutes in an emergency room and your career as an emergency room nurse has been you know, ended tragically. Grace, do you think that um, if you had to do it over again, would you would you choose nursing? That's tough. Uh, on my on my leave, I thought many times, you know, what else could I be? What other profession? And other than a stay at home dog mom, I think nursing would probably still be my choice. Um, a lot of the times, what really really counts is the coworkers that you have and the environment that you make it you know, as rough as a shift may be, if you have those coworkers that you can count on to make you laugh for even a split second, it makes it worth it. So don't get me wrong. There are days where I say, I want nothing to do with nursing. I don't want to be a nurse anymore, but really, you know, there are good days and there are bad days. So you have to kind of hold on to those good days, you know, especially when, especially when things are really tough. And Natalie has what you've seen changed you in any way? I'm definitely more aware of my surroundings at work and I feel sometimes I can't create that bond with patients because I'm for the fear of them taking that and manipulating it and putting me in a you know potentially dicey situation so it's it's a lot different now than when I first started. When Natalie Higgins in Missouri Nurse Grace Politis from Massachusetts and Dr. Jane Lipscomb health and safety expert Thank you so much to you all for joining us today. Thank you. And I'm Mabel Jong. You've been watching Health Day Now.